Safety meetings are not supposed to be boring, but they are. So in this episode, we'll explore two big problems with boring safety meetings and three strategies to fix them. People work, the human touch in workplace safety. Available everywhere on Amazon. To learn more, go to kevburns.com slash peoplework. Talks from the TED conferences are engaging. Now, if you're not familiar with TED, which is Technology Entertainment Design, they're a global set of conferences that bring together the world's most fascinating thinkers and doers who are challenged to give the talk of their lives in 18 minutes or less. Did you hear that? World-class thinkers get 18 minutes or less to make their point or they get the hook. Now, some of the world's greatest thinkers will change the world with their ideas in under 18 minutes. So the question becomes, if world-class thinkers and thought leaders are only given 18 minutes to make their point, have the learning stick, and ultimately change the world, why are mediocre safety presenters given 60 to 90 minutes to make a point or two about safety? If issues like fighting world hunger and jump-starting world economies can be addressed in 18 minutes, why are safety meetings running longer than that? See, safety complacency is a big problem today, but never more so than safety meeting complacency, the lack of focused engagement in preparing engaging safety meetings. And look, safety folks don't invest any time or effort into fixing their meetings. They're complacent with the way things are. Attendees are bored and disengaged with safety meetings, but nothing seems to change. Now, isn't that the very definition of complacency? But the whole conversation about complacent safety people will have to wait for another episode. This episode is going to focus on the problems and real reasons safety meetings are traditionally so boring and what to do about it. So, let's start with problem number one, which is padding, fillers, and fluff. Now, when safety meeting presenters are given a 90-minute time slot to fill, They'll pad their presentations to fill all of that time. I mean, seriously, do we need 90 minutes to cover proper use of a ladder or hygienic hand-washing techniques? Look, give somebody a block of time to fill, and they will. Over-preparing with cutesy videos, those downloaded gruesome internet photos of severed limbs and barely relevant, but certainly not engaging stats and charts and graphs. Ugh. This is the surefire sign that the Length of the meeting is more important than the content. We have blocks of time to fill, the meeting organizer might believe, so we'll fill all of those blocks. And it sets up safety meetings that fail to engage. Now let me illustrate it for you. You ever sat in a meeting listening to a presentation that was full of stuff, so full that the presenter got stuck in talking about some of the off-topic stuff? So much that he needed to end it up having to either rush through the, the, bunch of, the last bunch of his slides at the end or, or skip them all together? Isn't the stuff at the end the real meat? Isn't that where presenters make their point and send you on your way with a compelling call to action? But they got bogged down in the middle of stuff and never made their big point. And you, as a meeting attendee, were left to try and figure out what the point of the presentation was and what your call to action was supposed to be. All because the presenter overprepared in an effort to make sure he filled his whole time slot. What if you can make your point in 15 minutes? Do you really need to keep talking for another 45 minutes? Is the schedule or the block of time more important than the content? If you're still trying to fill your safety meeting to meet a certain time frame, you're contributing to the problem. Problem one, which is padding, fillers, and fluff. That being said, let's move on to the next problem, problem number two. It's all important, except it's not. <laughs> what are employees supposed to do differently as the result of the safety meeting? Don't have an answer? That means there's no specific target outcome or call to action for meeting attendees. Now, without a target outcome or call to action, anyone can talk about anything for any amount of time, provided it's loosely about safety, in the generalist sense of the word. Is it important that everything be covered in every meeting? What parts are urgent today? See, when safety meetings are not focused on a target outcome or call to action for employees, then presenters feel forced to cover all of it, and that's what gets covered, everything. And for every new word, topic, or idea presented, it leaves safety meeting attendees confused. Really, is it up to the employees to figure out what the most important part was to remember, 
or what to do better or differently and what to focus on to achieve the suggested outcomes, that should be evident from the opening moment of the meeting. Too much information makes that a recipe for a failed and boring safety meeting. So problem number two, it's all important except it's not. So now that you know the two biggest problems with boring safety meetings are that there's too much padding, fluff, and filler, and you think everything needs to be covered in every safety meeting, except it doesn't, what can you do to fix it? Here are three strategies that the average safety meeting and organizer hasn't even considered. It's the way safety leaders get their safety meetings done. Number one, content over schedule. Now, if you've got an hour to fill and you're simply looking for some sort of presenter to fill that time slot, you should ask yourself whether you're actually addressing a particular issue or are you merely giving the illusion of addressing the issue? Figure out what you need done or addressed. Ask questions of your experts and select topics and content for your meetings based on deliverables, not the amount of time in a schedule. If a presenter needs 20 minutes to address the problem, don't make them add filler and fluff to stretch it out to 90 minutes just because you've scheduled 90 minutes. You're better off giving your people a one hour break after a riveting 30 minute presentation to think about how they can apply what they learn instead of forcing them to sit there and be distracted by the fluff and convoluted messages. Short presentations, on topic, advance one idea at a time. Strategy one, content over schedule. Number two, introduce a call to action. Are you challenging your people to internalize and talk about what they've just learned? Or are you dumping information and moving on to the next dump session? Give your meeting attendees five or so minutes, but preferably more, to brainstorm among themselves how they might use the information practically. Address their solutions publicly for 10 minutes and then give them a 15 minute break for a job well done. Every safety meeting should feature a new subject, new learning, and a new focus on using the information to make attendees better at staying safe. Make them use the information you just gave them. People want to know what you want them to do with the information you give them. So tell them what you expect to happen, then give them the opportunity to put it into action. Strategy two, introduce a call to action. And finally, number three, Protect the minds of your attendees. Now, I know that sounds ominous, doesn't it? But, but it's not. It's one of your major responsibilities as a safety person or meeting organizer. You have to make sure that your safety meetings don't end up as information dumps where people are left more confused by trying to separate what was important from what was merely fluff and filler. Now, in the same way that you would protect your employees from physical harm, you got to protect them from information overload. Conflicting messages. Every presentation should be vetted before the meeting. So have a small committee go through each presentation before it goes public. Now that includes the safety manager or safety director who's actually in charge of running the meetings. No one gets to spring surprise presentations on your people, including you. So make the messaging consistent. Edit, edit, and edit some more. Get rid of the fluff and the padding and get to the meaningful stuff. No one ever felt cheated that the safety meeting was too short. But if you keep them short, you'll get better engagement. Strategy number three is protect the minds of your attendees. Look, safety meetings are not supposed to be boring. People, uh, more specifically presenters, make them that way. They're boring when they have no target outcome or a call to action for attendees to act on. They're boring when they go on and on filling a time slot. They're boring when too many things are discussed in one sitting. So ask yourself, what's the most important thing your people need to hear today? And focus on that one thing and drive the information home. Get focused. Safety meetings are meant to help make your organization be better, not better informed. In order for your organization to get better, the purpose, the practice, and the presentation have got to be better too. You know, I consult with joint health and safety committees, safety managers, safety teams, to improve the format and content and deliverables and safety meetings. The point is to get focused on your safety meetings, to stop getting bogged down with minutia and charts and graphs. And hey, by the way, if your presentation needs charts to explain your point, you don't know your material well enough. Never, never use charts and graphs in safety meetings, you look like you're filling space because you don't know what to focus on. 
That one little tip may just save your credibility in the next meeting you organize. People aren't motivated by to, to safety by charts. They're motivated by your enthusiasm for what you believe. And if you want to take a better look at your safety meetings format and content and presentation, I'd be only too happy to help. Oh, and there are two full chapters on better safety meetings in my book, People Work, The Human Touch in Workplace Safety.